including ion toxicity areas. So uh, the reason why I try to show this is basically to give you the excitement how, uh, how this, uh, the technology behind it uh, is also illustrated here. What went behind in breeding that particular variety, one has to understand. And this uh, is a very important breeding strategy. We call it as GSR breeding strategy. And it was uh, very, very developed at Erie and it was evolved uh, with the, uh, 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 with the uh, time tested over many, many generations over the last 10 years. And what happened is, what happens here is we use the BC1 F2 generation. You make a cross with one recipient, uh, highly adapted genotype and uh, 10 to 15 restore, uh, do donor parents are crossed and uh, you create BC1 F1 and uh, BC1 F2 populations, bulk populations. These bulk populations are simultaneously screened for multiple abiotic and biotic stresses. And this uh, BC1 F2 is again uh, progeny tested uh, in BC1 F3. And then again, a uh, third round of testing to confirmation in BC1 F4. When you do three rounds, you are comparing it with the best uh, checks, uh, the, the trade checks, and the best uh, uh, yielding checks, and, under, and this is all carried out also on the normal irrigated conditions as well. So uh, we, we use these materials around, around 1,500 introgression lines, uh, selective introgression lines are created, which can be utilized for mapping, trait mapping for any of the traits that you had screened, and uh, it, it, it easily maps them, uh, and then you can use the, the best yielding ones, about 120, to create the, uh, the preliminary yield trials, uh, uh, replicated trials basically. And then uh, advanced yield trial also replicated in dry and wet season, uh, two seasons to reduce the number to 60 from 120. And then uh, this is sent to the multi-environment trials in different countries. And the partners in 16 countries uh, tested them and then they nominate into their national trials. And eventually these varieties are released to the farmers. Now, if any of these uh, introduction lines coming from two different uh, uh, donor parents, but a common recipient parent can be used to make a cross, uh, that is called the design QTL pyramiding uh, approach, where you know a particular set of traits uh, coming in one introduction line, but coming from a different donor uh, line, uh, but, the case, but both share the same recipient parent. And these two are selectively crossed based on the molecular data. And in F2, again, uh, this is screened for uh, two rounds uh, because in two rounds, you can fix the, uh, the homozygosity and, in, uh, and it can go into the uh, trials. Uh, this is the advantage of this approach. And by this approach, uh, they, uh, uh, both from the Chinese Academy of Agriculture Sciences that shared the GSR varieties in their breeding systems, as well as the ERI's uh, main uh, breeding program, GSR breeding, we could develop uh, about uh, 28 uh, of the uh, varieties were released uh, from Iris uh, program, and in total, 56 were released. And uh, the last releases in India were AIR 56 Dan, uh, which is uh, very important uh, in the context because it is being released in Punjab, Haryana region. And uh, Huang Wang Zan PR 126. Uh, is the uh, is the uh, recipient parent of this particular line. So PR126 is already covering 30% of the area in Punjab. And uh, because of its duration is 15 days earlier than PUSA 44, uh, that makes uh, uh, the less irrigation water is required, lesser chemicals, lesser pesticides, and it makes it uh, very much fitting in the uh, rice potato uh, cropping system. And uh, that way, uh, the, the, this particular line can easily replace it because it has drought tolerance and salinity tolerance in addition uh, to the E levels are much impressive than the first generation of GSR varieties. So this uh, gives us a lot of hope and there are more than hundreds of these type of materials in India nominated in the ACRIP trials. Now, if you look at the 28 of them is directly developed and agreed and tested, adapted, released and in target countries. The record time was seven to nine years of time. And 2.7 million hectares currently cover, uh, deployed, 110 climate smart varieties from ERI are in the pipeline for release over the six countries. And 
So have a look at the closer uh, look at these uh, materials, how they perform under a normal condition and in, in low input condition under rain fed conditions and in uh, what was the relative advantage of uh, across uh, different conditions. We see that uh, the many of the traits is more than 10% uh, up to 30%, you can see the advantage. And these are the checks below and uh, uh, with which it is compared with the target traits uh, that are used, uh, including on a hybrid SL8. So uh, what we, uh, we realized that, that to adopt this into the hybrid breeding program, we can create a similar set of uh, uh, recipient parent from a particular heterotic pool and creating the donor pool of 20 restorers, we can create a similar set of uh, approach where you screen multiple stresses in three rounds and then uh, create a set of uh, elite uh, uh, good combining ability uh, backgrounds in the adaptable recipient parent and this uh, restorers uh, coming from the same heterotic pool, we can create hundreds of these restorers uh, with uh, uh, climatic uh, suitable for climatic conditions and especially multiple abiotic and biotic stress tolerances. So this is uh, that approach. This can be extended to even to the maintainer breeding programs. So by this way, uh, we, we also use the, uh, what we call uh, some of the trials that we created under irrigated, uh, low input and cold and salinity. You can see the advantage of the uh, materials and in our stress in drought is so severe that it kills uh, the, uh, the trial even. Uh, we give about, uh, uh, after 30 days of irrigation, after transplanting, we retract the uh, irrigation in the drought plots, uh, creating near more than, uh, after 51 days, there is no irrigation water in that field. And that even kills much of the material. So that is how we screen drought. And when you want to combine, I told you that uh, when you have the common recipient parent, like this particular cross had the common recipient parent, Huang Wang Zhan, and this was coming from one parent, and this is coming from another parent, uh, but the same recipient parent. Uh, if we can combine the restorer genes, uh, both are having restorer genes, and then we screen them in uh, different uh, screens, and these, these selected ones are again redistributed to multiple screens, and uh, after that, we can even uh, do a resequencing or GPS uh, 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 genotyping of this material. And based on this, we can create the, uh, the best materials that can be released as inbreds as well as uh, it can be used in the hybrid breeding program. Now, uh, some of these DQ lines, if you look at uh, the design cutial pyramiding lines, were much uh, stronger and much higher yielding than the the parental lines that we develop through the, the regular approach of interpretation breeding. So design cutial pyramiding uh, gave better yields under irrigated. It touches something like 10.4 tons. And to just look at this type of materials is really uh, a wonderful sight to see these materials in the field. And we used the, the GBS uh, called tunable GBS from data to bio. And this publication was done in Frontiers and you can follow this. Uh, just to give you an illustration after the, uh, BC1, F5, you can see the most of these loci are either homozygous or uh, uh, the, uh, the major homozygous or minor homozygous. You don't see heterozygous loci at all. So the fixation of the, uh, the genotypes is within uh, very rapidly done in three rounds of screening. And that makes it uh, uh, to achieve the genetic gains much faster than expected uh, by normal approach. So these uh, severe stresses causes the, uh, the rapid fixation. And this process, when we try to analyze the non-synonymous synics in these materials and these surface diagrams can easily show you that the most of the color-coded uh, uh, green ones are the biotic stresses and the red ones are the, uh, the abiotic stress tolerances and the blue ones are the other uh, stress-related families. You can see when we screen this material for these major genes, known genes, you can see many of these populations, uh, the interrogation lines had these genes selected uh, by this approach. So now we can easily know how to pyramid these interrogation lines by design. And this is how this whole technology works. Not only that, we can also map different target rates uh, for different target rates for drought, salinity, 
and we can easily uh, get these peaks uh, and with high load values and uh, uh, these have been mapped very well in many of the uh, populations that we studied. Now to cut this story short, uh, many of these multi-stress now were mostly in the restorer backgrounds and that made it uh, easy for us when I took charge in 2016 made uh, to on the hybridize immediately we initiated the crosses between the the stress tolerant with the CMS lines and the TGMS lines that we developed and uh, made these crosses and we saw very easily that much of the heterosis uh, was scaled up uh, beyond 20 percent and in in two line hybrids it even touched 40 percent and uh, this is a very important uh, beginning for developing the climate smart hybrids and today we have the first generation of hybrids ready and it is uh, going to be tested in different parts of the world. And the second generation would emerge when we convert the CMS line also into climatic, uh, climate uh, smartness traits into them. And then when both sides, the, both the parents have these traits, that will be uh, the ultimate uh, objective of our breeding program to develop the climate smart. So basically to summarize it, the genomics-assisted hybridized parental line breeding, what we did was basically uh, the simultaneous uh, multiple abiotic and biotic stress screening selection scheme is a very interesting uh, approach by where we can uh, employ early generation backcross breeding approach uh, to uh, screen for restorers and maintainer backgrounds uh, uh, by this innovative GSR breeding strategy where we can uh, uh, not only utilize for QTL discovery, also for the hybridized development. Coming to the several uh, promising parental line uh, developed with multiple abiotic stresses and now currently used in the climate smart hybrid combinations. And the genomic assisted breeding also uh, helped us in understanding which crosses to be uh, used for the uh, design QTL pyramiding approach and uh, pyramided and uh, stacked more genes uh, for abiotic stresses uh, over each other. And then, we, all can, we can also pyramid non-allelic uh, QTLs or segments that can combine many of these uh, traits from different donors uh, into common recipient parent uh, to develop the climate resilient hybrids in the, as per design and needs. So at ERI, what we are doing currently is uh, we are trying to create heterotic pools and uh, that has been now created. And we use the 3K genomes uh, that was used uh, uh, in our breeding program where more than 500 of these materials were used for directly in the uh, multi-stress uh, breeding programs. And now uh, we, we have classified this, our source nursery into different heterotic pools, as you see on this side. And now uh, when you cross the widely, wider uh, genetic pools, uh, very likelihood that you will get good combinations. And then we are employing the artificial intelligent technologies uh, and also uh, genomic prediction models and machine learning tools uh, to predict the best combinations uh, and to reduce the uh, cost in identifying the best combinations. And uh, uh, this way uh, we have, uh, uh, we can uh, be sure of our success rate increases. Recently we published a paper on the heterosis breeding via genomic selection in rice. And this uh, uh, paper uh, was published with the UC Riverside, uh, Shijong Shu, uh, who is uh, uh, the, uh, the scientist at uh, uh, UC Riverside. And the, the first author is a postdoc and she did this work. And this is a wonderful work where they used the uh, existing rice population of 1,495 and using GBLUFs uh, uh, to perform the hybrid performance predictions. Uh, they could also not only uh, replicate tenfold validations across prediction abilities, uh, on 10 agronomic traits that range between 0.35 to 0.92. But if you look at the uh, yield uh, prediction was 0.54, but uh, major genes like uh, grain length was 0.92. And now you can predict uh, using this uh, founder lines, uh, you can predict uh, even cross combinations without need of uh, your parental lines to be in that uh, set of founder lines. This uh, would be extended to the current uh, ERI uh, breeding programs where we'll be extrapolating that information to predict the best combinations here. And uh, uh, the other scheme that I would like to highlight here is the, uh, the 1000 F1 trial. This 1000 F1 trial is a very, very uh, ambitious project. 
which is already uh, uh, started in 2019. And uh, uh, th there are 10 locations basically. Uh, you don't, uh, we don't cover 1,000 F1 in uh, all of these sites, but we divide these 1,000 F1s into 50% coming from the MRYT trials that the HRDC members contribute to the, uh, the HRDC membership. They have their slots of known hybrids uh, with their best performing hybrids from the industry. And 50% of the hybrids are from the IRIS hybrid program. And 20% uh, of this, uh, uh, so let me put it like this, 40 coming from private sector, 40 coming from IRI, and 20% coming from the best market checks, uh, including the best market checks in their locations. And every 40 of these individual uh, uh, hybrids are basically customized for each location so that the people who are uh, evaluating, they are looking at the ERI hybrids that are customized for that region and comparing it with the best uh, hybrids from the industry and best uh, check hybrids in, the, uh, uh, in that region. So basically there's, this is called uh, a kind of spatial testing and sparse testing. And uh, you can see the grain uh, yield performance of all hybrids in each location is predicted. The best hybrid combinations in different and across regions can be identified. And each cooperator would know which hybrid combinations are doing well. But at the backside of this, we know at ERI, we'll know that which of our combinations and which parental lines did good in, uh, in a given target region. And immediately these uh, breeding uh, materials would be quickly employed to uh, create the next generation of parental line breeding. We will rapidly go by the RGA, uh, rapid generation advancement and forward breeding approaches to breed superior parents. And these superior parents would help in developing the superior hybrids. And in this way, uh, a cycle of another set of 1000 F1s would be created. And uh, this would uh, help in uh, achieving the genetic gains uh, in the hybrid breeding program. And this is very important uh, uh, from a hybrid uh, research standpoint of view when your hybrids get into multiple environments and this will be super laid uh, over by grain quality and disease and other uh, layers will be uh, uh, layered over it. And this would uh, increase our uh, uh, collective genotyping and phenotyping approaches that will be uh, helping us to map only all the tra major traits uh, that are concerning this the hybrid uh, hybridized research. And uh, this will be a fantastic uh, 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 design, but uh, to implement and get it done in the coming years is going to be one of the biggest challenge, especially in the COVID times when seed movements are highly restricted and uh, taking a little more time. And this is one such a plot at ERI of the 1000 F1 trial. Uh, you can see uh, this was in 2019 and uh, uh, we saw this uh, results were very good. And uh, we also not only working on the uh, very important uh, uh, insect, BPH, which is much influenced by the climatic conditions. And they come in, uh, in uh, big waves, in, especially in Indonesia, where BPH is one of the major uh, problems there. And uh, this BPH38 is a novel gene identified uh, in the Hong Kong Zan background with the uh, gene coming from the Khazar uh, donor. And uh, one of the reasons for this, uh, we narrowed down to this uh, particular 260 uh, loci, uh, which uh, could be one of the F1, F box proteins and uh, possessing the, the uh, leucine rich repeat domain uh, and could be involved in the salicyclic uh, uh, signaling pathways that gives uh, BPH resistance. And uh, uh, we are trying to incorporate this into our breeding materials, especially restorers and maintainers to confer this tolerance into the hybrids as well. Also, at the same time, we are also working on the, uh, the nutrient use efficient traits. We mapped uh, recently a paper uh, which was published in PLOS One, you can refer to that. But to cut this story short, we, we could map 19 QTLs that were screened uh, at uh, different stages, at the same time at different levels of uh, for the nutrient uh, used, like zero NPK, 80% NPK, suboptimal, and 100% uh, NPK. By doing so, we could easily detect uh, two major uh, hotspots, especially on chromosome two, uh, especially the, uh, the OS NPF 7.1 and the OS GF4. Uh, and this is a growth uh, regulatory factor and the NPF is a nitrate dye 
tripeptide transporter. Uh, this technically uh, uh, helps in the use efficiency uh, pathways. And what we achieved in the hybridized program is we could successfully release and uh, 17 hybrids out of which six were first time commercialized to uh, the private sector on limited exclusivity uh, for a six year period to especially uh, three of these hybrids to Tau Corporation and another two hybrids to SL Agritech. And we have currently members up to 88 in the, in the HRDC membership. We publish our annual report uh, too and it's shared with the HRDC members annually. And many of the platinum green and green members are free to join. There is no uh, cost for them. The private membership starts at $20,000 per annum and uh, the platinum starts at 45K. And these are the uh, models by which one can really uh, utilize the, the germplasm that is uh, freely sh uh, shared with the public sector, but it is uh, given to the public and private, the uh, private partners for uh, uh, for uh, for their members uh, for their membership, and we bring this value to them. These are the uh, six hybrids that I mentioned. Uh, one of them is a two-line hybrid, uh, MST061. I take you to another topic where uh, which is much related to the uh, direct seeded hybrids. Uh, we are working very seriously on this topic on development of uh, direct seeded hybrids. Our first uh, 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 low-hanging fruit was. Uh, Mestizo 89, which turned out to be very, very good for uh, direct seeded conditions. And this was uh, verified by the Direct Seeded Rice Consortium, which is a consortium for uh, uh, direct seeded and led by Dr. Virendar Atiri. And this is uh, uh, one of the uh, early uh, situation where we could identify this. Now we are having a very full-fledged breeding program on the parental line breeding. Or, uh, uh, and also developing many DSR hybrids. And uh, using the, the, the integration lines that we developed in the past, many of them were also direct seeded uh, high inputs that we developed. And these are now in the restorer backgrounds and directly utilized. But to understand the key traits that are required to develop the uh, DSR hybrids, the foremost is the anaerobic germination tolerance, emergence from deeper soil depths, shorter duration, high yield uh, potential, Weed suppressiveness and uh, herbicide tolerance should be incorporated. Lodging resistance is a key trait and tolerance to abiotic stresses, especially drought and uh, nutrient use efficiency are very important. Provided we have this, uh, this, uh, this type of direct seeded hybrids uh, can be also, uh, uh, we can employ alternate wetting and drying uh, strategy, thereby reducing the greenhouse gas emissions uh, in these plots and dark seeded rice is really the future in the coming days. And we also, also in progressing uh, B, uh, BPH, uh, Tungro and the Blast and BLB resistance genes uh, into the, uh, the maintainer and restorer lines, uh, elite restorers and maintainers, which will be shared with the HRDC members soon. And also ERI has been in the forefront to share such knowledge of uh, marker estate breeding for hybridized technology. And we have listed uh, here uh, several of these uh, trait-based uh, gene-based uh, gene markers, uh, which are uh, available for people to use for the marker estate breeding and utilization in their pipelines. And also uh, ERI introduced uh, the uh, forward breeding approach for hybridized uh, with 10 uh, markers uh, with the Intertech uh, uh, panel, uh, which is also available uh, for uh, people to use uh, for their breeding efforts. And by this way, uh, we can do a forward breeding approach where many of the B by B and R by R crosses can be filtered quickly in the early generations for using these markers and uh, progress in RGA single seed descent approach uh, rapidly uh, to F3 to F6 in 1.2 years. And therefore, we can create uh, materials in two years uh, that can be shared with the members. Uh, I try to cover another important area which everybody would be excited is the two line hybridized technology. How this uh, helps in the climate smart hybrid, uh, climate smart hybrids to uh, propagate in much uh, cheaper and much uh, sophisticated manner. But now to understand this, uh, one has to uh, understand 
temperature sensitive genic, uh, genetic male sterility system uh, uh, for two line hybrid development. Now, this is a major gene and, uh, uh, and it's a recessive uh, gene uh, located in the nucleus and uh, it requires uh, low temperature uh, to become fertile or uh, in, in, and this can be achieved in the low temperature conditions where the plants are raised and multiplied. And these seeds are brought to high temperature regions and uh, where it can be restored by any non-TGMS, which we call as pollen parent, uh, can restore the fertility of this. So there is no such thing like a restorer here or a maintainer here. Any parent can restore the fertility in the TGMS lines. And this is how uh, the benefit is you cut away the maintenance part and the cost of seed production can be uh, reduced by at least 40 to 50 percent.